This video is going to be an introduction to R. So I've pulled up R Studio since that's what I'm recommending we use instead of pulling up R itself. We're going to program through the graphical user interface, R Studio. And I think the first thing we should know is that uh, there's basically two different spaces for which you can use um, this window. There's the console here, so named, where you can practice your code. And you can just see that R has a little cursor here waiting for you to enter some things. And if you just treat it as like a big calculator, everything's going to work out. Now, previously, what we've done is looked at creating our markdown documents. That's for um, creating some sort of formal output. But when all you're going to do is mess around with code, like we're going to do in this case, you can create an R script. This won't let you uh, weave together text and code and the output from the code. It won't let you put LaTeX or anything like that in it. It's just simply R code. But it's going to highlight a good point for us. You can see a new window just opened up here. This is a file, strictly an R file, because that's what I chose to open, an R script file. And it's separate from the console. So this is like a space where you might want to save code for future use. And that's all we're really going to do right now in this tutorial about how to use R. We will use the console as a playground to develop code. And once we have a line of code that we are like, that we like, we are happy with, and we think it is correct, it's best then to put it into a file somewhere, whether that's an R script file or an R markdown file. So the console is like your playground until you're satisfied with a line of code that works. And then you can copy and paste it and save it for future into whatever sort of file you're working with. I'm just going to use this untitled R script file. So I was saying R is a big calculator. And you can certainly do cool things like, oh, I don't know. R has the number pi in it. OK, so check this out. Here's something brand new. I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to hold Command and then hit Enter. And it will send my line of code for whichever line my cursor is on into the console for me. So none, none of this copying and pasting business. On a Mac, you hold Command and hit Return or Enter. On a Windows machine, you'll hold Control and hit Enter. And whatever line your cursor is on will be sent to the console for you. OK, so here we go. R is just a big calculator. I don't know what pi to the third is, but who cares? R does. It'll do the calculation for us right away. Oh, yeah, by the way, this is to the power of 3. So this is pi to the power of 3. And you are in charge of um, parentheses here. Uh, so just beware of that. OK, let's keep it moving. R is a big calculator. It can do crazy division that you don't never want to do in your life, but you don't have to because R will do it for you. This is the most powerful calculator you've ever used in your life. And in fact, it gets better because you can store variables. So here I'm going to create a variable named x. And into this variable, this is less than dash. I call it the assignment operator in R. Into the variable named x, I'm going to store the output of this calculation. Now, we should note two things have happened. One, x did not print for us as a line of code that does not get assigned to a variable would. So this highlighted line of code was not assigned to a variable. It printed automatically. This line of code was assigned to the variable x, so it did not print. But you see that our studio registered this value for you named x, and it holds the value 10,024.09852735487. Uh, in R, by default, we'll get about 16 decimals of precision. Since we made it to the moon on about three decimals of precision, uh, I'm going to call 16 plenty. Two will suffice for most of our purposes. And you can create other variables, like y. Remember, you can't just type it out and expect to use it later on. But if you type it out and run that line of code with Command or Control-Enter, 
such that you have two values in your global environment, you can then do totally cool stuff like x plus y. Add those numbers together first and then divide by pi. I don't know why you'd want to do a calculation like that, but it doesn't really matter because you can do it in R. It is just an insanely big calculator. There's some things you should note about variable names, like variable names cannot have spaces in them. Variable names must start with a letter. Variable names can have underscores. That is an underscore, but they cannot have any other special characters. So here's some names. So here is a variable named Yoda, and we're assigning into Yoda the string, surrounded by double quotes makes a string, a master. And you can do things like Luke Skywalker. And you can assign to Luke Skywalker the number 10. Who cares, <laughs> right? We can make these variables, but you can't have something that looks like this. That is not a variable in R. And R will yell at you if you try to make it a variable. Unexpected symbol. It doesn't know what to do with that because it starts with numbers. Okay, so this was pretty good. Uh, you should also try to be careful with capitalization. It is legal to do this, and that is a different variable name than Luke Skywalker with L and S not capitalized, but you should be consistent with your capitalization. If at any point you find yourself forgetting how you capitalized a variable name, then I would suggest you stop using capitalization. You're either consistent or don't use it, which makes you consistently not using capitalization. That's a great way to do. Um, one quick side note on variable names. Uh, often people will suggest that the hardest part about programming is coming up with variable names. When I started learning to program, I was going through my uh, advisor's C++ file. If you don't know what that is, you don't have to. And she chose to name variables like this, temp1, temp2, temp3, all the way down to, I kid you not, there was like temp capital A, capital A. Oh my God, it was the worst. Variable naming is an incredibly difficult task in the world of programming. But I digress. Let's go on. We can create vectors, which I hope you have already uh, learned about from a separate video. In R, you can create vectors of the integers 1, 2, and 3. So this is one variable that holds three numbers in it, specifically the numbers 1, 2, and 3. You can also create vectors of uh, ordered integers by this syntax. That is a colon 3. I mean 1 colon 3 and we'll store it into the variable a. So if you printed either Z or A, it would print out to be the same thing. But the benefit of this is you could do 12343. Now A is a vector of length 12,343. And you can see it consists of all the integers in that uh, sequence. But it doesn't need to start at 1. It can start at 10 and go up to 12,343 or whatever. OK. So we can store vectors, and vectors can be any finite length. Well, I guess technically in R, they can't be any finite length. They have a maximum length, something like 2 to the 31st power minus 1, something around there at least. Anyway, it's plenty big for all of our concerns. Um, and let's create a variable named die that is singular for dice and it'll hold the numbers one through six because we'll use that later on in this tutorial um, once you have a vector you can access elements of it with this square bracket notation following the name of the vector itself so accessing elements of die is not terribly interesting because they have the same known uh, value as the index itself. But if we replace die with a, 
you can see the first element extracted from the vector named A is 10. And the hundredth element extracted from the vector named A is 109. The cool thing is you can do this sort of stuff. Give me the first five elements of the vector A starting at the hundredth element, and it'll give you a new vector. That's going to be an incredibly powerful uh, tool for us later on. For now, just know that it works. Uh, try to convince yourself, maybe with a smaller vector than this, that you understand what is going on. But we will return to syntax like this later on. OK, we're moving along at a brisk pace, but that's why we're recording this, so you can stop and rewind at your convenience. Uh, hashtags denote comments. Comments are completely ignored by the computer. So even if you put some sort of otherwise legal syntax in your file, R is going to completely ignore it. It did not evaluate 2 plus 2 like it would here because you led this line of code with a hashtag. Hashtags, comments, uh, hashtags create comments for us, and comments are a way to write text in your program for human consumption so that you understand what a line of code does. So you might say, access the 100th, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105th elements of the vector A. That is a helpful comment if you don't know what this line of code is actually doing. You're accessing these elements of the vector A. That is a comment. These comments are now useless because you should know what comments do. All right, what else we got? OK, so say you have a vector like A. R has some functions built into it, like sum. And you could sum the elements of A. Now, it's a little hard for you to check that summing the elements of A did what you want. But if you replaced A with Z, because we can sum any vector you want, you can confirm 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6. Indeed, there's other functions built into R, like mean. You could take the mean of the vector named die and come up with 3.5. This will be an informative number to us later on, but right now you might just imagine it's the mean of the numbers 1 through 6. So we use functions in R maybe the same way we'd write functions in math. The function has a name, and you call it on some argument. In this case, though, your arguments can be named variables already created in R any of these variables can be passed to functions. But notice some of these variables are different types, like Yoda here is a string. And you can't really sum a string, so that's not meaningful. You could sum an integer, but it's not super important to sum up the single number 10, because it's essentially just going to act like 10 plus 0 or something. And, you're just going to get 10. But you could sum up vectors. So some functions in R are designed for specific types. Like there's functions designed to operate on strings. There's functions designed to operate on vectors. These are two examples I just gave you. And there's functions designed to operate on integers. For instance, 10 plus 10 plus is a function designed to operate on two integers. The only frustrating part about plus is we put it in between its two arguments instead of more formally to the left of its arguments. Um, functions are going to be a super powerful tool for us later on in R. So I'm just introducing them now, but we will see them again later on. Uh, R has help files built into it that you can access with a question mark. So you can say question mark mean and it pulls up the help file on the arithmetic mean. 
it gives you a one sentence, maybe a few more sentences sometimes, description of what the function does. It shows you how to call it. For the programmers out here, this is essentially the signature, or if it has multiple signatures for the function, how to call e any of the signatures. It tells you about the arguments, possible arguments to the function. But for almost all of us, the most meaningful part of any help file is going to be the examples all the way at the bottom. I encourage you to scroll down to the examples anytime you're looking at a help file and try to understand the function based on the examples. Okay, let's make one more variable that I'm going to name it densities, and I'm going to repeat the value one sixth six times. So it just looks like that. It's not at all clear why I wanted to do that, except for the fact that we can make a fun plot out of the two vectors, die and densities. And here is, or what will become, an informative plot for us later on in this course. For each of the values in the first vector, die, that's on the x-axis, we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And for each of the values in the second vector, density, we will put them on the y-axis. So that's 1 sixth, 1 sixth, 1 sixth, 1 sixth, all the way across. And hence, we get out a plot that represents something we'll define later, densities, of a fair die that has the face values 1 through 6. Plotting is um, an exceptionally helpful thing to do in the world of statistics. This class is not going to focus on plotting, but we will explore some plots to help us understand the concepts in the world of statistics. This was an incomplete introduction to the world of R, though it probably is going to help you get going for uh, some of the things we're going to see early on. We will return to more tutorials like this in the future where we expand on these ideas. So you really should come in here and play around to make sure you know about variable assignments, how and when you can use specific variable names. You should certainly know about vectors. Both syntaxes are helpful because you don't always want consecutive integers, but sometimes you do. Accessing specific elements of a vector is incredibly helpful. Knowing how to use functions is a trick that you will learn as your skills in R develop. But for now, I think these are fairly intuitive. And plots like this, uh, while they will work, like if you just copy these lines of code down and run them yourself, it is very easy to get lost in the world of plotting. So we will spend a little bit more time, but not a lot of time with making plots in R.